Handling a fresh kidney biopsy is critical because the longer the kidney biopsy is not divided out and placed in fixed, it's, it's degrading and can hurt the biopsy's quality. And the last thing we want to do is have to repeat a kidney biopsy because it's not handled properly. Also keep in mind, every kidney biopsy is different. Uh, some kidney biopsies are really good cores, some of them are not. Um, so if you're unsure how to separate it out um, because you have a, a poor quality biopsy, always consult your attending uh, before you do anything. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to handle a kidney biopsy for transplant. Typically it comes fresh. So any specimen that you receive fresh, you need to uh, have concerns with what they're looking for. Uh, don't just uh, put it in a cassette and uh, handle it normal. You need to ask questions like, why did this come fresh? And those kind of questions. So, consists of three tan brown to yellow cylindrical soft tissues ranging from 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 cm in greatest dimensions period. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the tips of each of the cores and submit it in glued or aldehyde for electron microscopy. The idea here is we're trying to get the part of the core that has glomeruli in it for the EM sample. So you put your glutaraldehyde in a tube and you put just the tips, I mean super super tiny, okay, I don't know if you can even see that on the end of my forceps, see how tiny that is. And you just place it in the glutaraldehyde. And make sure you have plenty of glutaraldehyde in there. Glutaraldehyde uh, does not uh, penetrate the tissue as rapidly as uh, formalin does. So you want to have make sure you have plenty of glutaraldehyde for the tissue sample. Even though the tissue sample is extremely small, you still want to. Make sure there's plenty of glutaraldehyde in there. Okay. So, with their glutaraldehyde submitted, now we're going to submit our sample that's going to be for light microscopy. Now anything that's received fresh you do not want to use a uh, bag or sponges with because they will distort the sample because it's still fresh so you want to use lens paper. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the smaller two cores and submit it for light microscopy and then put it in the middle of the bag. Okay so and when you fold up these lens papers, you don't want to match up the corners like you're folding a sheet. You actually want to have the corners overlap. So, I'm going to fold it like this. So you see these two corners are not matched up, okay? And then you fold this in, then you fold this in, and then you roll the whole thing over, okay? This enables them better to actually see the sample that they're going to be looking for. And they see these two little bunny ears, is what I call them, sticking out. And what the embedder will do is they grab these two corners and they pull, and it will open up in like a little cup so they won't lose any of the sample. So that's how you will fold up your lens paper. And you place that in the cassette. Then you will. Um, have a sample that's left for your immunofluorescence. So I'll, I just use the container that it's received in since it's already properly labeled with the patient's name and then I put in my Michelle's fixative for that sample. And that's how you handle a transplant liver biopsy or kidney biopsy. So thanks for watching. In this case, this uh, video showed a uh, kidney biopsy that was kind of fragmented and smaller. 
Uh, some of them are good and they won't have any issues. Uh, but again, if you have any questions about how to handle these things, just get your attending and uh, get them quick and don't let this uh, sit in saline for too long because it will degrade. Thanks.